हेलो 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 गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग फ्रॉम विच एवर पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड यू आर इन वेलकम बैक टू अडोनाइज किंगडम द किंगडम वी टॉक अबाउट द मोस्ट हाई गॉड द चैनल वेयर जीसस इज लॉर्ड एंड विल ऑलवेज एंड ऑलवेज बिलीव इन हिम वेलकम 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 माय नेम इज ओहुदी द मैसेंजर and yeah let's start with the word of prayer as usual father we want to thank you and bless you on this day we honor you we lift up your name holy are your ways mighty are your works oh father i thank you for my viewers each and every one of them protect them bless them mightily oh father holy spirit of god you're welcome take control of this meeting as you use me as an oracle of your voice oh father as i pass your message to your children in yeshua's name amen and amen okay guys yeah here we are it's a new day new week new season so uh <clears throat> This week we are going on we are carrying on with our last week's message which was about uh we were talking about David and uh okay how he David moves with the favor of God every single time he was moving with in God's favor and now today we are going to we are going from 1 Samuel chapter number 17 17 from uh, verse 21 up to verse 30 17 21 to verse 30 and the title is spirit filled confidence confidence a spirit filled confidence you know if you are full of the spirit the holy spirit you'll be full of confidence so that's why we say it's a spirit filled confidence Okay. Mm, let's just start from verse 21. You know, here the Philistines were preparing to fight with the Israelites. And the Philistines were on one valley, the Israelites were on the uh, the next uh, on the other side of the mountain. I mean the Philistines were on one mountain and then there was a valley and on the other side were the Israelites. So each one of all the armies were taunting each other and they're not no army was making the first move so let's see what what transpired after that from uh, verse 21 for israel and the philistines had put up put the battle in array army against em and david left his courage in the hand of the keeper of the courage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren okay the courage that uh, david left with the keeper was uh, the food that his dad has given him so that he can go and give it to his brothers but maybe david had other ideas uh, or anyway he was a young lad and full of curiosity so he gave the courage the bag to one of the keepers and rushed to see what was going on in the battle he came and saluted his brethren ah uh, ah uh, yeah he came and sa- he ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren and as he talked with them behold there came up the champion of the philistine of gath goliath by the name by name out of the armies of the philistines and spake according to the same according to the same words and that david had them initially david didn't know what was transpiring here so he had what this man was saying and all the men of israel when they saw the man fled from him and they were so afraid they were so afraid and the men of israel said have you seen this man that is come up you know to them 
they saw the man. They saw the man. Have you seen this man that is come up? They were afraid of the man. They were so afraid because he was a giant and they were not used to giants, something like that. Okay. And they were so they were so afraid. Verse 25. They were um, and the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up surely to defy Israel? Is he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. This is getting interesting. So that means the king was, in fact, even the king was scared. And what he wanted maybe is to bribe whoever was going to beat up, whoever was going to win, to beat Goliath. So he was going to bribe him with stuff, something like that. Let's carry on. So you find that uh, David, according to David, David was full of the Holy Spirit. That's why David went there. He was full of the Holy Spirit. And if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you will always, always be afraid. Everything will be scaring you. You know, the goodness with the Holy Spirit, He guides you. He guides us. He, I mean, He puts confidence in us. But if you are not, you will always be afraid of your attackers. The Holy Spirit gives you boldness. And... You'll conquer your enemies. Riches will follow you. So, you see, it just the Holy Spirit gives us all the confidence that we, we require. Okay, as we carry on in verse 26, And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth? This Philistine. What will what shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and take it away reproach from Israel? And who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killed him. So, okay, in verse 26, David is focusing, you know, everyone else, all the soldiers who are, whoever kills, he'll get presents, prizes, gold from the king. He was finding everything to be perfect. You're going to get stuff from the king. But David, according to David, David was focusing on Israel's reputation and the honor of Yahoo. David was focusing on the reputation of Israel because he, he was like, how can somebody come and taunt Israel like that and the honor of his most high God? So, yeah, David came in a different perspective. Others were thinking of rewards. He saw the, but David saw the problem in a spiritual in spiritual terms not fleshly or in material terms as the other guys were seeing that so according to him even if we look at uh, <coughs> according to david he know he knew that him he was going because he's blessed he was going as he was being guided by the holy spirit because even in Proverbs 10.22, it says, Blessings of the Lord make it rich and adds, adds no sorrow. Because David was blessed. And he's, I mean, he was ready to stand for God. In spirit, he saw Goliath as a weak and defeated adversary. Unlike, unlike all the other guys, the other guys were seeing 
Goliath's, I mean, as Goliath was coming to, de to destroy them completely. But for David, this guy, it was a done, it was a done deal. He had already finished him completely. So we were in verse 28. And Eliab, and Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why, come, why comest thou down hither? With whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy, thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down, that thou might see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him towards another and spake after the, the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former man. So, aha. Uh -huh. That's how David was. So, you'll find that uh, David was asking I mean, he, want, he wanted to help out, but there was, this, there was this brother, Eliab. Remember, Eliab was the eldest in their family. And when Saul was anointed, I mean, Samuel came to, Prophet Samuel came to anoint David. Jesse brought Eliab. He was the el eldest, the tallest, the strongest, but God rejected him. So you'll find you can we can say that Eliab, Eliab he had some hard feelings against David because when he thinks of the blessings, I mean the anointing and the way people believe in anointing, he knew the anointing was supposed to be his, but it was given to David. So it's like he had that feeling. He was still mad and. He didn't, he didn't want anything to do with David. He just wanted to belittle him. But David was not ready to be put down. So that's why you find the people close to you will always look for your downfall by being negative to your endeavors. The closest people are the ones who are always telling you, you can't do this. You can't do that business. You can't go to that country. You can't lead these people. You can't become rich. You can't, I mean, you can't pray for people and get healed because we know you. You see, Eliab said he knew David. And not knowing that him, he knew David out, out, outwardly. But the Lord knew David inside in his heart. So you find... Uh, Eliab thought that he knew David, but he really didn't know David's heart, only God. That's why, why he, we find in, uh, I think it's in Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah chapter number 17. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse, uh, I think it's verse 10, yeah. Jeremiah 17, 10. What does God say about knowing? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. You see, Eliab and the rest, and even right now as we speak, people around you, people know you outwardly. They don't know what's in your heart, what's in your mind, but God knows everything. That's why for me, I don't care about anybody because I know, these people, they just see, and as usual, you'll find people will talk about you and then carry on with their lives. So if you start bothering yourself, giving yourself pressure, listening to what they say, you'll never do anything positive on this planet Earth. And your, your time is limited on this Earth. Just follow what the word of the Lord says. God says, I know your heart and your mind, and I've got good plans for you good plans to prosper not to be, to go down but if you listen to negativity that means god will pull himself away from you 
So David knew where he was going. He knew where his, uh, I mean, uh, what God had good plans for him. That That's why he was so confident in everything that he was doing. Because he was with God. He knew that Jehovah will and was always with him. So, as I said, Eliab might have, have, might have ill feelings against David because of the anointing which he missed. And that anointing, it was in First Sam, Samuel chapter number 16 and verse 7, whereby God said, I reject him. The book of First Samuel, let me just uh, read for you guys. Chapter number 16 and verse 7, when he was brought, it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or, or his height. For I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance. But the Lord looks at the heart. The heart. That's where the Holy One of Israel looks. So you guys out there, you have to think. The Lord looks at your heart. Not the way man looks at things in Yeshua's mighty name that's the confidence walking in the spirit spirit filled person be one of them in Yeshua's name amen and amen if you don't want if you don't know anything about God anything about Yahweh and you want to be part and parcel of the kingdom just say this prayer after me father I come before you as a sinner I've done bad things in my life I am it's, I feel like I'm a reject. I want to be a child of God. I want to be your child. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And he bled because of all my filthy life. On the third day he rose again. And now he's seated on your right hand side. Oh Jehovah, accept me in your kingdom. I want to be your child. I believe so in Jesus name. Amen and amen. If you say that prayer. You're one of you are one in the kingdom. You are a child of God. Get a King James Version Bible. Start reading it slowly by slowly. And also join a church near you. You find brothers and sisters. They'll take care of you. They'll show you what real happiness is. And you'll never ever regret. Bless you, my brother and my sister. And Father, I pray for all my viewers. Wherever they are, my listeners, whichever part of the world they are in, bless each and every one of them. Heal the ones who are sick. Touch them in Yeshua's mighty name. And the ones who are struggling in life, open doors for them. Open doors for them. Open heavens, O oh Father. Bless them mightily. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, guys. See you next time, and may the Holy One of Israel bless you mightily. Shalom. Peace.